Hello, this is the first video in the AI audit exam prep series. Before we delve into the actual concepts and uh, topics for the three domains, I will uh, walk you through some of the other basic details. Now this video essentially covers uh, the introduction section at the beginning and uh, the exam general information section towards the end of the review manual. Now the first question is about uh, what is the ideal preparation time? The manual mentions that uh, candidates uh, typically prepare for uh, three to six months before the exam with uh, designated study time each week and uh, increasing the study time closer to the exam. But uh, there are uh, three variables that should be considered to understand what will be your ideal preparation time. The first one is uh, your familiarity with the exam topics. The second one is about uh, how much time you can dedicate for the prep daily, weekly. And the third is uh, your personal learning curve. How fast can you read, understand, remember and recollect various concepts. Let us start with uh, your familiarity with the exam topics. Now the prerequisites for the AI audit exam are a CISA, CIA or a CPA qualification. And uh, when you look at the topics that uh, you would have already covered under uh, any of them, there is an overlap with the AI audit exam. You will see that uh, there is a significant overlap with CISA topics to a lesser degree with the CIA followed by the CPA exam. So you will not be starting from level zero. You are already familiar with uh, many of the topics for the AI audit exam. To put it more simply, you will uh, kind of go back to the governance and uh, risk frameworks, audit fundamentals and uh, information security concepts that you have covered in your previous certifications and see how they are applied or extended to cover AI. Next, uh, let us look at uh, the other two factors that is uh, dedicated prep time and your learning curve. Now the official manual as such is around uh, 170 pages containing around uh, 150 pages of actual content with uh, plenty of links to suggested external resources. As a first step, I would recommend that uh, you should read the manual end to end. Don't memorize anything, just uh, read it like a novel, just to get a sense of uh, what the exam is all about. Some topics may be light, some may be heavy, and uh, some will have uh, lots of technical jargon that uh, need to be looked up on uh, Google or uh, ChatGPT. But uh, just read through the entire manual once. My suggestion is that uh, you should start with just uh, 30 minutes of prep per day for the first week, increase it to 45 minutes per day in week 2 and uh, 60 minutes in week 3 and uh, gradually increase your prep time depending on uh, how much time you can spare per day. And uh, remember that uh, once you start taking the practice tests, you will have to dedicate around uh, 2.5 hours for every test and uh, then you have to dedicate at least a couple of hours to read through the answers and explanations. So dedicate a Sunday or a Saturday every week as your test day. Your uh, learning curve will uh, most probably look like this. For the first few days as you start with each domain, you may come across uh, new topics where uh, you need to spend a little more time to understand. As you progress, you will see that uh, the subsequent topics are uh, connected with or uh, build upon the previous topics and uh, your learning curve will go up steeply. So the key thing is uh, not to give up anywhere here. Some level of difficulty is to be expected here. So just keep going and uh, things will only get easier as you progress. Now there are uh, three domains. So where should you start your prep? Should you go one, two, three or uh, should you start with domain two which accounts for almost uh, half of the exam or uh, with domain three which is the smallest? It actually doesn't matter that much. You can go one, two, three or you can also go as per your familiarity with the topics. That is, if you are already familiar with the topics under domain 2, then start with uh, domain 2 and uh, complete it before moving on to 1 or 3. While the order of the domains doesn't matter, the order of the topics within each domain does matter because there is a logical flow. So you can start with any domain, but uh, you should at least read through all the topics of that domain before moving on to the next one. And uh, it is also very important that uh, you should keep attempting the questions for each topic so that you can be sure that uh, you are prepared to answer both uh, concept based and application based questions on that topic. This point is also repeated uh, several times in the manual, stressing on uh, experience based knowledge, practical knowledge, experience and application, actual exam questions often relate to practical experiences. When we look at the purpose of the manual and uh, its uh, suggested usage, treat it like a syllabus or a detailed curriculum. Read the basic concepts from the manual and uh, answer the questions based on those concepts. Now some questions are uh, given in the manual itself and uh, we also have a more extensive set of questions in our practice tests. 
you will be able to do a simple gap analysis based on how comfortably you are able to answer these questions. Use uh, external resources to learn more about the concepts and uh, fill any gaps in your understanding. And uh, repeat this process for all the topics till you start answering at least 80% uh, of the questions correctly, which means that uh, you are now ready to clear the actual exam without breaking a sweat. Where do the questions for the AI audit exam actually come from? Now the manual itself says that uh, the exam questions are written by experienced IS professionals from around the world. And uh, the questions are then reviewed by a working group and uh, accepted questions go into the exam database. And uh, if you look at the ISACA website, you will also find that uh, periodically SMEs are uh, called upon to submit questions. Now if the questions are accepted, then the SMEs will get CPE points which are required to keep your uh, certification active. Now the reason why I have uh, highlighted this point is to stress on the need to keep yourself updated on what is happening in the fields of AI and InfoSec audit. Now the official manual and uh, the practice questions are uh, updated like uh, once in a year or so. Whereas uh, the latest developments in uh, AI and IS will have gone a lot further. And uh, since the questions are being created by SMEs from across the world, these will be more up to date than the official prep material. Bottom line, don't depend only on the prep material. There are uh, a couple of other points mentioned in the manual that uh, the candidate's perceptions and experiences may not reflect the more global position and uh, the candidate must be flexible when reading a condition that may be contrary to the candidate's experience. Now, what does this mean? Well, it simply means that uh, while going through the manual or uh, any external resource, read it with an open mind because your current approach towards a topic or a situation may be different from what the current global approach towards the topic is. For example, if there is any issue with a server, my personal approach might be just reboot it and it will work. But uh, the current global approach may be to verify the error, look at the logs, diagnose the root cause, develop a fix, test the fix, deploy the fix. So while my approach may also work, the correct answer in the exam would be the current global approach. On the same lines, the manual also advises candidates to read the questions and the answer options properly and pay attention to specific words like uh, which is the best, most or first. For example, if you read through this question and uh, the answer options, all of them are correct. But uh, we have to choose the best option, which is option 2. So don't just select the first answer option that seems to be correct. Read through all the options and see if there is a better answer. And uh, this should become a habit even when you are taking the practice tests. Now that uh, we are done with the Gyan, we can uh, move on to the actual exam topics, starting with uh, domain 1 in the next video. Meanwhile, you might have noticed something a little curious in the first version of the review manual. Now the percentages for each of the domains is given and uh, when we apply those percentages on 90 questions, we get uh, 30, 41 and 19. But uh, under the specific domains, the manual says that uh, this domain represents 33% uh, which is approximately 25 questions, 46%. 34 questions, 21% which is 16 questions. Now this adds up to 75 questions. So what is this difference of 15 questions all about? Well, they could be simple typo errors or uh, maybe the original plan was to have uh, 75 questions in this exam. Or these 15 questions could be the experimental or the pre-test questions that uh, Isaka includes in the actual test. Now these uh, pre-test questions will not affect your final scores. And uh, there is no way of identifying which questions are experimental questions. You will simply have to answer all the questions that you get in the exam. Now, why are these experimental questions included in the exam at all? Well, by assessing how many candidates answer these experimental questions correctly, they can be assigned a difficulty rating. So that when these uh, experimental questions uh, become live questions, then the conversion from the real score to the scaled score can be done on the basis of the difficulty level. For now, don't worry about the scores, the scales and all of that. Just remember to answer all the questions and select the best answer for each question. So that's it for this video. Any questions, comments or feedback, please post it below. We will start with the domain 1 topics from the next video.